Already done, just recording the thing, yeah. And so balance about it generally, but the thing I think that's probably more prote most protective is to do the regular sesame oil massage because the sesame oil is the best thing for vata. It's quite heating in nature. When you put it on your skin, you absorb it and it gives you some resilience to the cold. But um, the other thing is that uh, the core fire is in the gut and um, you know the heat goes from that fire out to the body. So if you use, if you enjoy hot spices with your food, that stoking of the fire may also help from within to warm you a bit better. Yeah, it's mostly a vata thing, Don, I would think, you know, which is which is air and space. So vata can be can be very cold. So I think your advice there for Abiyanga in the morning time with the everybody should be doing it, really. And at this time of the year, everybody should be doing it as well. So just go into your bathroom, get some nice sesame oil. Uh, some cold pressed organic sesame oil, heat it up above body temperature and just massage it in everywhere. And then especially on your fingers and everything, and then just leave it on. You can actually go and do a set of asanas after that, if you like, and do your, uh, and then come back and have a shower and wash it off. Uh, it's important to wash it off because it draws toxins out of the body, but it's very, very good for Vata. Probably one of the best things you can do because Vata is very light and very moving and oil is very, very grounding, and it'll put heat into your body that will stay there for the rest of your day. So someone commented on your new glasses, Don, so they're, uh, yeah, and you've answered okay. that one. And someone said, what is the best Ayurvedic treatment for skin acne, please? When you're thinking about uh, skin, you're think, thinking about a seat of vata. So in the, in, in the, in the, um, in the skin is one of the locations of one of the five vatas called Brajika. Um, is it and, pardon? Is it a pitta? Yeah. Oh, did I say vata? Sorry. Yeah, pitta, pitta, yeah, pitta, yeah. You're, you're right, No. So the Brajika is a pitta, and pitta is to do with transformation and its purpose in the skin in the same way as when you do an oil massage, you absorb the oil. Well, in a way, it's being digested in your skin in the same way when you take something through your mouth, you digest as, as you uh, ingest something through the skin, that bradyca is there to process. But the other aspect of that is that the skin is an excretory organ. We get rid of toxins through the skin. And so um, when we perspire, we also eliminate. It's a, it, that's a very good way of getting rid of heavy metals, actually, that saunas can be helpful with, with an excess of heavy metals on board. But anyway... Oh. The acne is just an indication then that there's too much coming through the skin, these oily toxins. And so you want to think about a good digestion and a good pure diet, because if you're taking rubbish in or if you're creating rubbish through poor digestion, then it's not going to help your skin. Uh, the liver is the big organ for processing toxins and has very good impact on the skin. So, um, Things that are, are bitter, like the leafy greens that are good for bit, um, pitta, are good for the liver. And turmeric is a very good spice for the liver. So I would use plenty of turmeric. Um, and then we do have the uh, herbal products that could be helpful. Um, I would think about liver care there, liver care tablets, one with each meal. And if the skin is still not clearing, I would think about adding in the radiant skin um, and I mean that should do it in general um, but if it's a persisting problem a consultation it's often to do with hormones as well so I mean there's that aspect of it for the teenager yeah. that might also need to be addressed yeah uh, it is a thing that affects teenagers a lot like I had bad acne as a kid actually I had acne in my 20s as well I remember my first consultation with you Actually, acne was one of the things I was concerned about because I'm very fit. And, and, and look at you now, no. Look at me now. <laughs> but anyway, one of the things he got me to do at the time, remembering back, was ghee and turmeric mixed together and apply it on the, on the skin, topically, you know. Okay. Uh, or something else, Noel, is to get oat flour, neem powder, and apple cider vinegar. That mix. Apple cider vinegar with some neem powder that they can get from you and some oat flour and make a mix and use that as a, sort of a face pack, put it on damp until it dries and then, and then wash it off. 
Yeah, actually, I remember my acne did clear up. I mean, I learned TM around the same time. And for, I don't know whether it was a combination of change in diet and all that, but, but my acne did clear up. I mean, I had acne quite bad. I remember going to the doctor and the doctor put me on oxytetracycline. Is that? Is that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which I found out later on makes you sensitive to sunlight. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it worked. I have to say it did work. It did clear yeah. up my skin very, very quickly, which is all you wanted when you're a teenager, you know? But yeah. I obviously, it, it, looking back on it now, I probably would have preferred not to have gone on something like that. You know, I don't even know if they still prescribe it, but that's what oh, I they do. They do, and kids can be on it for months, and it's not great for the microbiome. Yeah. But anyway, a friend, a friend had COVID last summer, and she still got any, she's not got any taste or smell. Now it's become psychological. Yeah, um, Susan. I mean, again, your friend. If she's ongoing with the chronic situation and starting to get down with it, why can't she think about taking care of her own health by doing the Ayurveda seven lesson course? And even if necessary, coming and having a consultation. This, this COVID thing was a kapha problem in general. Kapha was very much involved because kapha is to do with the chest and the head area. And, um, and kapha is to do with the taste and smell. So the the influence of the COVID has been to throw her calf out and it needs to brings her calf back to balance and that would require that she doesn't sleep in even if she's getting depressed that she gets up early in the morning gets out for a walk and and make sure she doesn't eat heavily at calf times of morning and evening and uh, choose lots of spices in her foods um so yeah probably warrants a consultation as well but i see dr richvinder is on there hi raj you too. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. How are you, Raj? Good, good. Thank you. We'll good give one to you, you Dr. Raj, as soon as, you, as soon as you're there. Can age related hearing loss and whooshing sound in the ears be helped by Ayurveda? And depends on what age you are. Um, you can definitely, um, hearing loss, difficult to restore, um, but the sounds, uh, it could be like similar to tinnitus, I think. And the treatments, the therapies like oiling, Karnapurna we call, which they fill the oil with the ear and then it's it's taken out again. And so it's done by uh, under the under the uh, therapist or doctor prescription or the Shirodara treatment is very good. But at home, I would suggest uh, uh, putting oil on your scalp regularly. So Brahmi oil or um, uh, almond oil, these kind of nourishing oils could be very good. We do have, I think Noel is going to stock the eardrops soon. So the eardrops could be used. So it could be vata related because ears are the sensory organ related to vata. So you have to mind the vata. And also age is, as we age, we more go towards over 60. We are into the vata phase of our life with the dryness could be a big factor in there. So healthy fats in your diet and oiling eardrops and oiling your scalp, Shirdara. So you can do these things to prevent it. Yeah, the eardrops I'm having difficulty getting. I have got bilva oil, which is also very good. You told me to get that as well. But yeah. the eardrops, yeah. MA638, I'm having a little difficulty getting them, but I, I will get them. I see Dr. Nahid is on as well. Hi, Dr. Nahid. I just want to... Sorry, go ahead, Raj. Hello. Just want to comment on Dr. Brennan's question about the uh, nasal... I think Dr. Brennan did mention the nasal drops, but there's a the powder we have, we call vacha. It's very useful. So what you do is you take a pinch of vacha and sniffle it off. It's not like drugs now, but it's the same way. So it is very beneficial for open up the sensory. So you sneeze immediately after it, and it does open up the, the sensory channel. So it's worth trying. Okay. Hi, Dr. Nahid. Hi, Noel. How are you? Very good. How are you? Good, thank you. Hi, Dr. Oh, Janet. Hi, Dr. Richmond. Hello. Hello. Good, good to see you. you. Good to see you. So we'll have a question for you, Dr. Nahid. What treatment lifestyle changes would you recommend for uh, hypothyroidism? Uh, so hypothyroidism is related to your kapha imbalance and your pitta imbalance as well. Uh, so I would suggest like balancing on your metabolism, which is uh, obviously is going to be managed by your pitta when it's an imbalance, when it's an in the balance escape. And because there is an imbalance in the pitta and your metabolism that ultimately leads to imbalance in your kapha. That's why some people gain a lot of weight. Some people can get you know, a lot of cough and cold. They're really prone to develop all this allergic uh, rhinitis and uh, this flu kind of symptoms a lot. 
So musta is a very good herb to balance your pitta. And eating on time, uh, main meal uh, at the middle of the day, having warm water every now and then, um, uh, like a slightly warm water, like a hot water every now and then can help you to keep your digestive fire uh, healthy and help you to digest your food. And I would say that hypothyroidism is a very kind of, you know, uh, it has very diverse kind of symptoms. So for everyone, it's, it's very different. I would suggest that have a consultation, uh, find out your body type. I found out your, uh, you know, which dosha is actually not in balance and work together from there. But in general, I would say that try to focus on your metabolism, try to correct your metabolism as much as possible. Thanks very much, Dr. Nahid. Don, there's one there about a water filter. I think you're the expert on water filters. It's from Rachel. I'm looking to invest in a water filter and confused as to what type of filter to buy. I can't see the rest of the men. Dr. Brennan once mentioned that he used, uh, it got the message goes on me then. Um, any suggestions on water filters, Don? Um, I, well, the the uh, company I would I would do the research with online are um, Simply Water, Simply Water, A P L Y Water. So they they will provide that. Send them out in the post, you know. And I think they might even organise you to get your under the sink filters organised. So that they would be the ones to go for. Okay, okay. So Redfinder, someone, uh, is, is Z-O-O -O is the only three letters I'm getting. I feel cold continually, but also only in my feet. I can't do hot spices and have loads of IBS. Okay, um, I suggest you do, um, we have gotukula cut. So you start taking gotukula tea and you can uh, do a little bit of uh, either cinnamon in it or you can do a bit of fennel. So it's just a vata imbalance and uh, it is a downward flow of the air, which is the apana. Uh, so you try the goat quality and we have a herb called haritaki. Haritaki is brilliant. So you take small amount of like a quarter teaspoon of haritaki with honey on a regular basis. So you can try that and a bit of oil massage on your feet uh, before you go to bed. And you can take up the extra oil with the kitchen towel and put your socks on for a few minutes and then you can take them off. Would it be fair to say that both of those conditions are caused by vata? Is IBS? Yeah. yeah. IBS is very much vata, yes. It is the bad circulation that can cause IBS. You might have a lot of, um, that's where we need to take the history, the, the, like, you need the picture a bit more clearly. There might be a lot of anxiety and stress and depends on the diet. You cannot do very strong spices. Yes, that will flare up the IBS a bit, but you can do mild spices like fennel. So vata churna will be actually good for you to start with. And then there are lots of other herbs that can help with IBS. So they yeah. both conditions are majorly vata related. Yeah. So do the seven lesson course and specifically do the course on vata. I think it's the third lesson in, the second or third lesson in is completely devoted to vata. And as we all know, vata is the king of the doshas. It's the one that causes most problems with people, particularly as they get older. It's the one that goes the easiest out of balance stress too much tv computers all those type of things contribute to increase vata and we we need to, a lifestyle to help bring that back into balance you know so sue Dab says i have a family history of heart disease and have high cholesterol i'm slim have a healthy diet don't smoke and in my, in my late i can't see the rest of them yeah she's asking about any other advice on that she doesn't want to take statin maybe that's dr brennan's turn now yeah i think um I think, you know, having a family history of heart disease, um, I think that one thing that I would also find hint interesting, doctors just don't do it, and I, I wonder why not, but a homeocysteine test, because if your homocysteine is high, it means that your liver is not clearing the homocysteine, and that causes inflammation or contributes to the inflammation. And therefore, it's one of the factors that can contribute, like the smoking and blood pressure and all these other factors that contribute. But this one is, is treatable with taking um, vitamin B12, vitamin B6, folic acid. So a simple supplement would reduce the homocysteine. So homocysteine test, if possible, would be one thing that I'd be interested in. Um, and... I think there's the, the, the statin was discovered 
by a Chinese lady. Um, she, they, they, she recently shared the Nobel Prize, that's what you get for doing the drug companies great favors. Um, the, what happened was the drug companies are looking all the time for their next profit. And so they're trawling through the traditional systems and there's a, a, Ch a, a Chinese medicine um, called red rice yeast that uh, reduces cholesterol. And they extracted from that the statin and then they couldn't patent the red rice yeast, the drug companies. So they patented the statin and it's the best selling drug internationally now. And in most cases, in my experience, it's not really needed unless the cholesterol is very high because simple measures of diet and lifestyle will bring down the cholesterol. And I've seen, I've been told, you know, in, in a lecture, postgraduate lecture I was at for doctors that it was impossible to bring down cholesterol by more than 10% by diet and lifestyle. So I stood up and I said, well, I brought mine down by 33%. And um, I have patients who've done the same. And the answer of the cardiologist was that that's not possible, which is, to me is rather extraordinary because I've done it. Um, the, the, with the Ayurveda, it's a fat metabolism thing. Certainly the, the garlic family can be helpful. Uh, spices like turmeric and fenugreek are very useful. Um, and... Uh, um, there are certain foods which have a fiber. They, they, part of the problem is that we clear toxins through the liver. So the toxins that the liver has extracted, the fatty toxins are put into the bile and they go into the, the gut through the bile duct. And so they're now in the gut. And in times past, people ate a very high fiber diet and the fiber just held on to those toxins and then they got eliminated from the bowel uh, when people went to the toilet. But because of the lack of the right fiber in the diet, the cholesterol, the bad cholesterol is reabsorbed. And so it's important to have things like pulses in the diet of sweet potatoes and apples and oats because they all help to clear the bad toxins. Um, and, uh, and then, in, Noel has a, a product there that's from Cytoplan, which is a combination of hawthorn, a combination of hawthorn, red rice yeast, and um, coenzyme Q10. Now, if somebody's taking a statin, they should take coenzyme Q10 because statins stop the production in our body of coenzyme Q10, which is vital for uh, creating energy, in, especially in our muscle cells. And that's why is one of the main side effects of statins for people is muscle pain. Um, overall though, so I would say, you know, it's not a pill for an ill situation. It's that you have a family tendency, which leaves you at risk for inflammation in your body, which affects your blood vessels. That inflammatory process causes the gradual buildup of the, of the blockage in the blood vessel causing heart attacks and strokes. So you need an overall balance in your life that prevents the inflammation process in your body. And so, you know, you can always have a more intense Ayurvedic prescription by seeing Dr. Raj or Dr. Mahid or myself or, um, uh, because I think it's worth your while. So that's my suggestions. Very good, Don. I, I would also say uh, anybody on a statin or anybody consider, considering taking a statin should read a book by a Scottish doctor called Dr. Michael McKittrick. And the book is called The Great Cholesterol Con. And it's probably one of the best reads I ever had in a, in a medical perspective. And it's, it's, it's well worth taking a look at. Red rice yeast, we do. We sell that. We sell quite a lot of it. And it's on the website. So if you're, you know, I mean, it seems to me that all of the people my age, all of my friends, all of my brothers, every time they go to a doctor, they're being <laughs> told to go on statins. They're all coming to me and saying, the doctors told me to go on statins. And anyway, my advice is to read that book before anybody goes on statins, you know. And one, one important thing, Noel, if somebody is on red rice yeast 
I'd probably take the same precaution that any doctor would take putting you on a statin is that he would do blood tests once a year because um, he wants to keep an eye on your liver function. Now, the statins have uh, about 1 20th the side effect profile. Red rice yeast, yeah. Yeah, I was taking a statin. Okay, well, far less so, side effects, yeah. But, but no harm in getting the annual blood tests done anywhere. Okay. Just the so, precaution. Okay, so we have a not so nice situation for Joy. She said, I've lost over two thirds of my hair after COVID in December. Is there anything that can stop it falling out? So I don't know, Dr. Ritvinder or Dr. Nahid, if you have any. Um... Uh, that's, go ahead, go ahead. We both can add, you add first, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's a very, um, that's because your body has been under shock, that your body has been under stress. So when your body has to deal with a lot of stress and shock, then uh, there is a tendency of hair to fall out, like like it happens in after pregnancy as well in your postpartum phase. Don't worry about it. Uh, I know that's a big concern, I understand, but the hair will start growing itself. So one of my friends is also experiencing a lot of hair fall, but after I think two or three months, with proper diet, uh, like you start taking some of the micronutrients in your diet, which which can help you to, you know, or uh, to fulfill all the uh, nutrients and the vitamins which you have lost during those phase while recovering. So have almonds, walnuts, raisins, uh, soaked overnight and have it in the morning. Have seeds in your diet. Have green leafy vegetables. Massage your scalp with coconut oil and a little bit of castor oil, like a drop of castor oil and a tablespoon of coconut oil. Massage it at least once a week. And do not shampoo it a lot. Do not comb your hair when it's uh, wet. And do not do styling or use your hair dryer to dry your hair like it dry naturally. So try to protect its root, you know. So when you apply shampoo as well, do not leave your shampoo for too long. Try to use natural uh, shampoo, which are like natural product based. And over the period of time, like two or three months, you will be able to regain all your hair. And you can have some of the supplements like amla key uh, like amla and yashki madhu licorice so uh, amla and licorice really helps to uh, you know regrow your hair so all all of these measures and just try to cut down your stress so do your meditation do your breathing exercises this will help you to re uh, reduce your stress and will try to regrow your hair yeah and i know joy is a meditator so joy just be regular with your tm and you know try, as i say try to bring down the stress levels because Actually, getting COVID can be very distressful as well with the anxiety and the fear around it. So, yeah, anyway, you're over it is the main thing. And uh, so you just need to get the hair growing back. So, Rajvinder, did you have anything to add to what Dr. Nahid said? Or? I see if we still have in the stock, Vata hair oil will be very good. And the Peta shampoo. Yeah, uh... Vata hair oil is very difficult to get at the moment. I have, I think I have one there in stock. So, Joy, if you want that, go on the website quickly. It's just called Vata hair oil. I'm hoping to get more from India, but and have you have you stocked the pita shampoo? Oh, that's not pita shampoo. I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you product. need something cooling for your scalp, so they both are a very cooling product. Okay, so pita shampoo really... I have and Vata hair oil I have as well. Yeah, it's yeah, because it's your liver, so look after your liver as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Raj. Yes. The healthy Sorry. hair days is a very good product note for Yeah, hair. yeah. MA953. Okay, Joy, that's another one. MA953, healthy hair and nails. Yeah. Thanks for that, Dr. Bremen. So one for you, Rajvinder. Uh, what to do with stiff lower back pain, please? Painful to stand and back inflexible. Thank you. Uh, you can start straight massaging the joint suit oil. It's very good oil for that kind of stiffness and pain. Just heat it up a bit. And I know it's difficult to get to your own back, but like crisscross movement with your hands and whatever you can work done gently uh, with your thumbs. Epsom salt in the baths and the osteo relief is a very good formula, MA1673. And you can take a bit of magnesium as well. So, and again, it's, it could be if you're working long standing hours or too much sitting, you try to avoid that. So have a balance between sitting and standing and eat, eat good diet, try to avoid vata, increasing food like leftover frozen food and, and eat more proteins in your diet. Again, it's a vata thing. Can I add something? Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Nahid. Uh, so exercise, uh, like some of the asana, like wind release, 
pose and a spinal twist that really helps with your back pain. And when you massage with uh, joint suit oil, I would suggest then try to have a hot water bottle and keep it over your lower back. So when you apply heat, it helps to reduce the stiffness and it also helps to increase the absorption of the oil. So, and you'll be relieved. You, you really feel relieved after 10 or 15 minutes after keeping the hot water bottle over the painful part. So joint suit oil is called MA939. It's, it's a wonderful, it's a sesame based oil with lots of herbs in it. And it's used for all types of pains and conditions on the joints. And so what Dr. Nahid is saying is you massage this into your back. And then on top of that, you use a hot water bottle wrapped in a cloth or something like that, just to and let the heat get in. When you get your back sorted out, when you get the pain down and you get the stiffness gone, then you need to learn a set of asanas, a set of yoga postures, and you need to do them every day every single day they only take 10 minutes i do them every morning and every evening there is no reason for people to become stiff and all knotted up as they get older there's just no reason for it if you, if you take care of yourself if you don't take care of yourself obviously there is and you know people sitting driving in cars sitting at desks all this stuff is not natural and it's not good for us so learn this set of asanas actually there there's a i demonstrate them on our youtube channel and dr Ridvinder does uh, yoga classes as well so learn them once you get your back sorted out so that you can do these things and uh, get get and then do them every day just to just to keep up that flexibility because there's no reason for for that that inflexibility to come in Raj, just one quick thing i think that the the, the book um mind your mind own back, back. Well, Steve yeah Steve yeah that, that those give you gentle postures you can do while you're back is sore, so, yeah, it that's is true. Sore. yeah, yeah, and yeah. Because, then you can continue yeah. with the more sophisticated because yeah. there's only five postures there, very simple and very easy to do, and anyone with a bad back can do them. And also, that as an emergency treatment, I'd carry with me the inhalation oil, Noel, because yeah. it, it's a fantastic oil. If you have the spasm and you're crippled and you just apply it, it clears the spasm so it gets you through the day while you allowed the deeper joint suit oil to do its healing work. But as an as emergency thing, I'd have the inhalation oil and I'd rub it in as I needed it twice or three times. It'll get you through the day when you're sort of blocked. So there's two Especially things you're hiking with no... Yeah, yeah. He's okay, a perfect, perfect example of it. <laughs> doing his asana twice a day. <laughs> he's he's running ahead of you, and if you're hiking with him, you need to carry the six feet for And if he goes hiking with me, she needs the six feet for <laughs> all. Yeah. The uh, so two things there. There's a book by Steve Tim. That's Steve T I M M. He's he's a guy from Chile, I think it is, and it's called Mind Your Own Back. I don't have it but you might get it on Amazon or some of the other bookstores. Then MA634, it's only a small little bottle of oil and the emergency one, very strong. And MA939 is joint suit oil. And then the information that Dr. Nahid gave there as well. So that's lots of advice for that. Uh, quick question on coconut oil, tinned coconut milk. What is your opinion on using tinned coconut milk given that coconuts are not available all year round? Dr. Ritzvinder, you're the cookery expert yeah well if you have to use it from the tin you better go for the organic brand like biona because the normal one yeah they i think the there is a certain chemical use around the cap which is not so good for long-term use but you can also buy coconut cream that comes in the carton it's a kind of a tetra pack uh, yeah so you can try to have both options if possible okay so someone had a sudden discoloration of their teeth they turned the grayish is there anything they can do to reverse this naturally i haven't come across that before dr brennan um i wonder were you using tetracycline as an antibiotic because that could do it um and Noel was lucky with his oxy tetracycline that got away with his teeth when well, he had teeth are not exactly pearly white so maybe they did have an effect on it but anyway uh, um um Liver functions, so we get that kind of discoloration, anything to do with the liver. I wonder, you know, what, what color does it say there? It's a gray. Gray. That's a condition called Shava Danta, uh, mm. where there is a blackish discoloration or the Black gray discoloration because of Vata imbalance. Mm -hmm. So there, We need to know more about the health history of the person. Yeah. Oil, oil pulling, oil pulling, because it's a Vata thing then. Yeah. And, generally balancing vata um, and 
you know, generally strengthening the bones because the teeth are a byproduct of the bone metabolism from an Ayurveda point of view. And again, um, I mean, there, there are foods which are appropriate to strengthen the bones as well. So that's another, another strategy. Um, and uh, certainly, uh, the, again, the, the seeds, uh, the uh, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, um, and mm. soup made with pulses and almonds and nuts and dates and raisins. No. So, you know, you want to make sure your vitamin D is good as well. So, you know, I think I would be balancing that to strengthening the bones and, and uh, using the oil. Pudding. Okay, so oil pulling is just putting sesame, just put the sesame oil in your mouth in the morning time and, and rinsing with it, keeping it in the mouth for a while. And it's very good for cleaning up all this area. And then just, and it does whiten the teeth as well. And then just spit it out, you know. Uh, so there there's one earlier on no, that we missed with mild blood pressure. And just to, to, to say that the best treatment for that, Jesme, is the transcendental meditation. I'd be surprised if it's mild blood pressure. If you're doing transcendental meditation, I think it it it, it undoes the underlying mechanism of stress and hyperactive um, system. So by settling you, it means your blood pressure tends to stay normal. Okay. Yeah, I did actually see that one. I skipped that one. All right. Yeah. So Nora Savage says, any suggestions for loss of flexibility in the hands and wrists? I don't find the GP very helpful. He says it's an aging problem. Well, <laughs> that's just, she's just 64. That's not an aging problem. Yeah. Uh, do the, 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 the yoga postures, the yoga movements for your, for your hands, you know, just exercise them and do the, the wrist this way and that way. And then use the oil, use the, use the sesame oil in there just to, to flex, flex them all up. But, but do that, uh, you know, just hold your hand out like that and move the wrist around like that and then back around that way. And then massage your fingers and your joint, with, just with sesame oil or joint suit oil and do that every day. And that should restore the flexibility. Think, Again, it's a vata thing. They're all vata problems tonight that are coming up. I, th I think it's an ama thing as well. Uh, 64, that, uh, maybe she should join our spring cleanse because she needs to clear ama out of her system. Why is she stiffening up? It's because um, material is, is lodging and blocking. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Therefore, they the detoxing, and then uh, what Noel is suggesting, I'd suggest in the sequence do the oil and then heat, heat the heat the hands, and then exercise, and then you'll get more joy at your exercise, and the exercise will help to move the arm along. But I do think an arm treatment to the clear arm from your system would be the the the, the other underlying mechanism. Start using ginger lalish, ginger lemon honey mixture with your food. So ginger is great. Or you can, if you have access to raw turmeric, mix the ginger, raw ginger, raw turmeric, make a little kind of a grate them together, put honey and lemon. It's great as Dr. Benin said, ama, or we have that in the powder form called trikatu, and with honey, half a teaspoon with your meal, that could help. Or the squeezy soft ball, like Noel was saying, soft ball uh, squeeze, you can do that kind of exercise will be very good as well. Okay, so our detox yeah. that Dr. Brennan mentioned, the spring detox is going to start on the 18th of April, and we're having a webinar about it on the 22nd of March. That's Tuesday, the 22nd of March, and you need to register for that webinar. I have sent out several newsletters with that link to register, but if you didn't get it or you, you need to, if you just send me an email, noel at ayurveda.ie, I'll send you back the registration link actually i'll include it in the newsletter tomorrow i, I send out th this recording and I, i'll just say that we mentioned it and I'll, I'll include it in the email tomorrow so register for that uh webinar on the 22nd of march and then the detox program itself will start on the 18th of april and i think we had about 200 people do the spring detox last year and we have a lot of people booked in for this year's one helen o'connell says uh Corsidal toothpaste can cause graying of the teeth, which improves when you stop. So I don't know if that's of, uh, uh, of any use. According to Ayurveda, what are some of the best ways to help the planet? Best way you can help the planet is help yourself live, live in tune with nature and, you know, uh, live, a, you know live a life, uh, li live a healthy life because, uh, and, you know, eat, don't be eating processed foods, eat locally grown foods maintain proper stress levels so you're not putting negativity out into the atmosphere and you know 
just lead a life that's very much in tune with nature and appreciate nature and enjoy the nature that's around you and eat good, healthy, locally grown, in season organic foods and be healthy and happy. Being happy and healthy is, is the best way I feel that you can actually help the planet. Maybe some other people have other opinions on that. Be kind to each other. There's a lot of anxiety and loneliness around. And it just feels so sad when you hear from people, they say the friendships are difficult, that they feel lonely. So as an Ayurveda, I think uh, we could, on the mental side, of course, Noli is talking about all the physical diet aspect, but mental problems are going to be a big pandemic, big epidemic, I think. So just be meditate a bit more, have a good yoga uh, meditation routine and just be kind to each other approach to people and um, if people don't come to you you reach out so i think that's that's the way our society needs especially the young generation they are suffering a lot so we can contribute to that i think that's wonderful and i'd i'd emphasize again that with no covering the physical and you covering the mental I would just point out that each one of us is, is an offshoot of an underlying being, our awareness, our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that it's very critical at this point in time that individuals everywhere start to awaken within at the deepest level, transcending and letting their mind settle to stillness. Because in that stillness is the fundamental dynamics of life. Uh, we've, we've lost the awareness of that which has caused mankind to live inappropriately against those laws of nature. But the more people that bring their mind to that level of stillness and that start to awaken at the deepest level, the more will mankind as a whole start to live in a way which is appropriate for life on this planet and take on the responsibility of being the custodian of this planet. So I think that that's a very nice question, Anna. We could have only expected it from you, Anna Carey. And uh, I hope it gives everybody on the call a reason to think not just about their own specific issues, but why they need to take care of themselves for the sake of the planet. Yeah, I mean, uh, the planet is your mother, you know, I mean, that's where you come from. And this is our home, you know, so we absolutely have to take care of it. But being aware and raising consciousness and living in tune with nature is certainly one of the ways that we can do that, you know, we could nearly do a separate webinar on that. I think we could talk about <laughs> we could talk about that one. <laughs> What's the Indian saying? Vaid Bhumi Bharat? Is that the, is that? Vasudeva Kutumkam. What is that? The world is my family. The world is my family. Your planet is my mother. You can put it that way as well. Yeah. So yeah. So it's it's you nourish like you nourish yourself, and you could be care very careful nourishing yourself. But it's the same way you nourish the planet back, which means you nourish the people back and nourish the mother earth by planting. I know we probably people have a beautiful garden and everybody plant a tree and and cut down on the plastics and all that kind of food waste and everything. So. We can contribute from our home side. We are hearing about somebody was very kind of concerned what happened if, if Russia take the plug out and we don't have gas and electricity, how are we going to do? So that's kind of a big question, what are we going to do? And so we can cut down on the needs, maybe use less electricity and gas if possible and save the planet. There's a lot, a lot we can contribute. Yeah, I would like to emphasize on this one, like this little thing, like try to buy less plastic as, as much as possible. So what I do, I always recycle the plastic bags, which I get from the market to use, uh, you know, throw my uh, leftovers or like my, you know, to use that for as a garbage bag, or I try to recycle if I have a plastic container or something to store something. So try to use, uh, you know, uh, buy as less as plastic possible, try to plant and try to recycle your clothes as well so uh, i can see like there are lots of uh, stores the like pennies like tesco they have their built-in recycle bin so you can just throw the things there so they can recycle and it doesn't just float in the ocean and the river so this small things like we think like, oh what can i do if, how can i make a huge difference like everyone is doing a little bit that can make a huge difference i believe yeah and actually Maharishi, I remember saying, tell, telling us to wear natural fibers like cottons and wools and silks and things like that. Don't forget that 
uh, polyester that clothes are made from is petroleum, it's plastic. And it's actually one of the worst forms of plastic pollution because you don't take your water bottle and put it into your washing machine. You, you don't take other plastic bags and put them into your clothes washing machine, but you do take your clothes and put them into your washing machine. And what happens then is that millions of tiny little fibers of plastic break off and get washed down the drain. And they're the ones that are really difficult to clean up out of nature. The bigger ones you can, you know, when the will is there, you can get rid of them. But when the smaller ones are, so avoid, I would say avoid clothing that's made from polyester if you can and just use natural fibers. But as I say, there's probably a whole a whole webinar that that, that you could, we can do in that at some stage, you know. So Anita says, I have a question about uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, how to reverse the symptoms, irregular periods, weight gain, what is the Ayurvedic perspective on that syndrome? Greetings from Austria. So I don't know, is there any, um, I don't know which one to hand that to. Rajvinder, do you want to have a go at that? Um, Aneta, best to you talk to one of us because we need to see what is your constitution for that because that could be very much of a kapha problem and very much of a vata problem. And sometimes there's a pitta involved as well. So that's the first thing to rule out. There are wonderful herbs like, um, just I can say on the top of my head, for example, trifla uh, could be very good, and um, kanchan or guglu, uh, one of the preparation we have, that could be very beneficial. So, and the change in the diet, which will be more focused on the kapha balancing. So, what you can start immediately is you cut down on if you eat any of the sugary or dairy products. So, so it is a kapha imbalance, and there's a there's a big in, like a hormonal imbalance involved there. So, yeah, so there are a couple of herbs and diet and lifestyle changes which we can suggest. So if you have done the salmon lesson course, you try to understand the kappa uh, a bit more and um, see if you if you resonate with it. If, if it's your body type, then you work on kappa balancing strategies, which are explained in the course. And then you try to talk to one of us. We can go in more depth with the herbs and everything. Because if I say take this herb, take this herb, it, it may not suit you or it, it, it might be a bit too strong or things like that. Yeah, no. I would suggest. I would suggest, as this is the kapha season, I would suggest that try to have a kapha detox, uh, the spring detox. Get your body type evaluated. Get get your agni, whether your agni is in the condition to take a detoxification plan at the moment. If it's all is good, I would suggest that go for a detox because it's a kapha condition, but detoxification really, really helps with PCODs. So with yeah. this season, as Doctor Sainan. Dr. Nahi said a lot of kapha issues are going to flare up. Skin issues, hay fever, sinus, uh, sticky eyes, so, and uh, any anything to do with the hormone and imbalance. That's depression. Gonna, depression. Yeah. yeah, these things are going to flare up in, in, in the next couple of months. So just kapha people, just, just watch out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah we are not scaring you we are not making yeah you. just yeah it's, it's all educational yeah. educational because i'm hearing people are having a flare in their skin and stuff like that so that's the kapha season and that's expected to happen like in the autumn we expect the sleep go out a window and and you feel a bit more stiff and restless so this is the kapha want to come out of the body it's not in it already increased now it's want to come out with the heat building up in the environment which is funny we still have windy so much wind in ireland but uh, that's that's what meant to happen in the kapha season yeah, I mean, this is not about, as you say, it's not about scaring people. It's about knowledge. When you have the knowledge yeah. and you understand the different doshas, vata, pitta, kapha, as we say in that course, in order to understand Ayurveda, you have to understand vata, pitta, kapha. And then you understand why these things are happening to you and why they're happening at a particular time of the year to you, why, why they can be more prevalent. So it's about understanding and knowledge. And then when you have that understanding and knowledge, you can make the correct decisions. But as I always say, and I'll say it again, this is a little Q&A that we do. We like to meet up with people and have a chat with them and we give suggestions and all that. But this does not substitute for a personal consultation and a, a proper program that's, you know, designed by an Ayurvedic physician. I mean, because, you know, when the Ayurvedic physician sees you, whether it's through Zoom or in person, you know, they're spending an hour with you. So they're getting, they can see much more clearly what's causing the problem or you, the things that you need to do as well. So we give out little tips here and there on, on these calls. But uh, again, it's not a substitution, uh, you know, for and especially when this condition is more serious, you know. But, and I think uh, the positive thing for Anita there, Noel, is, is that in terms of the medical, um, it's, it's possibly going to be a hormonal manipulation treatment she'll end up on, which is not healing. It may be symptomatic, 
and it may help, but you know, that Anita herself has the capacity to heal, you know, given the right directions. Um, it's hopeful. It's not a, a sudden fix for her, but she could over the months improve her situation, you know, were she to seriously take to the Ayurveda. So DP says, any help with acid reflux on the diet? Lots of help with acid reflux, really. It's a, a bit of thing. So maybe Nahid, if you want to say a word on that. Yeah, so acid reflux is obviously a very pitta thing uh, where you are producing more pitta than it's required. So I would suggest try to focus on how much you are eating and what time are you eating. Are you having the acid reflux more on the gay time? Then I would suggest try to have some, some kind of, you know, tea, like a herbal tea with coriander or uh, cumin so that it can keep your pitta in balance. Turmeric is a very good herb to work on your liver to keep because liver is the site of major site of the pitta where the pitta gets formed and stored. So you need to focus on your uh, liver as well. Uh, try to have, uh, maybe you can try, start trying to have liver care syrup or tablet based on your body type to balance your liver first. The, that will automatically try to balance your pitta and Try to eat on time, you know. Don't be hungry. Uh, don't remain, you know, hung hungry for too long. Like you're not having any food for five hours or six hours like that. Uh, try to. I would say that try to have a consultation because this this is also like you know depends on your body type. Like in general, I would suggest try to have a focus on balancing your pitta. Try to have coriander. Try to have uh, um, uh, liver care syrup uh, to balance your uh, liver and pitta as well. Yeah, I think that would need some specific kind of guidance. Uh, AC balance. We do have an AC balance. MA575 is, is very good for acid reflux. Yeah. yeah. It's now, just, just one other little point. Uh, lots of people are eating these big heavy meals in the evening. And eat, which they have, one? They're eating their big heavy meal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you see they have this slight tendency towards hiatus hernia, which means that the, the little valve at the top of the stomach is a bit faulty. So they go to bed with the heavy meal still in their stomach and lie down. Pressure goes back. The, the reflux happens through the night and they awake in the morning then with, with uh, feeling raw. So I uh, just shift that main meal to the middle of the day, DP, as an experiment to see if that helps. Great. Okay, lots of information there. Claire Lafferty asks about COVID. Claire, we have a few videos on COVID on our YouTube channel. You think uh, MA630 for early COVID, it was one of our recommendations, but just for people who had caught COVID, it's quite an expensive herb. Um, so oh, yes. Depends sorry. on the symptoms, what's going on. Yeah, 630 still beneficial clear. yeah, yeah. It's an antiviral yeah. it's an antiviral. and if you have cough then throat soup syrup is very good to have it yeah and then the yeah, yeah citoplady churna and trick too they are very good depends on what what's going on yeah what because symptoms are because it seems to affect people very very differently that's for sure i'm an ama i'm amazed at the range of symptoms that people get like i caught it myself at christmas but i was sick for one day a little fever and then a, head a smile headache and the next day i was fine you know so uh then I spent 10 days watching Top Gear because I was confined to my house, you know, and doing my accounts. But anyway, uh, yeah, so MA630 is 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 recommended. It is one of the, it is antiviral. We actually give it give it to people from who are heading to countries where there's malaria as well. But uh, is there anything I can do to help a hair fracture of the fifth metatarsal heal? Yes, there is. I'll leave that. Uh, I don't know. We used to have a very wonderful preparation. I think we can get it anymore. One seven five eight. That's yeah, it was brilliant for fractures. But you can do the as Dr. Brennan's emergency oil, the six three four oil, and the joint suit oil, and give it rest. Uh, Calcio care MA nine two five could be very beneficial, and then again osteo relief MA one six seven three. This kind of, because it has frankincense and frankincense is wonderful for healing bones and stuff like that. Plus the pain. So those two, that's what I suggest. Okay, Audrey asks. Sorry. Do we have anything which uh, in which we have Caesar's quadrangle? Uh, yeah, Caesar's quadrangulus. No, I think that that was one seven five. It had Lodra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, one six seven three, I think, would be the yeah one of the main. Laksha, Laksha, Google it was. No, yeah. 
Any food supplement to support the nervous system? Uh, 1674, Regen Nerve. So Regen Nerve, yeah. MA1674, Regen Nerve from Audrey. Someone says, I suffer from blisters on the tip of the tongue. Not nice, especially when I'm tired or low in energy. Any suggestions, please? Don't get tired, Carmel. Uh, but that's an obvious one. But the uh, other one, any of the doctors have any? It's a vatted, well, yeah. Tiredness would be a vatted thing, but blisters on the tip of the tongue? Yeah, it's a lot of heat in your body, I think. So uh, licorice, licorice tea will be very good. Just general, but yeah, there's uh, oil pulling and uh, something to um, support your nervous system, like Blissful Joy or MA222. Some of those formulas could be very beneficial. So you need to support your nervous system a bit. Is it a is it a is it a pitta condition? I haven't come across it before. Blisters are like anything that kind of ulcers and blisters. There is a pitta involved there, and she might be a very strong pit person. You might be skipping your meals and stuff like that. So make sure you you fill yourself properly. You hydrate yourself. And if it's a regular, then you might need to take a bit of lysine for short term. And then the, uh, one of the cooling herb, licorice is cooling, amla is cooling, because they are good antioxidant, vitamin C, and um, uh, yeah, then the nerve tonics. Okay. Okay. There's an interesting question coming up, which I'm going to answer, and the doctors probably are not going to like the answer. But anyway, Mary says, this is not the question. Uh, Mary says, also have severe pain in the chest. Mary must have asked the question already. Had an X-ray, no breaks or fractures showing, but feels like a bone in the chest broken all that all this week. That's very strange. And you had an X-ray, Mary, and nothing showed up. So uh, it, it, uh, it's likely to be a muscular thing, no. Okay. Because you know, there's there's lots of fine muscles that connect the, between the ribs, you know, because we're breathing in and out. And um, but we can we can strain. It can be a twisting movement that strains uh, some muscle in the chest and gives that sort of pain. Um, Sometimes uh, it's a reflex as well. Pardon? A reflex, acid reflex also gives that kind of pain. Yeah, it could be severe pain as well in the center of the chest. So it could be something very simple like that. So as, as Regiminder is pointing, to, to try to take care of your digestion. And what I would say is try the uh, um, inhalation oil rubbed on and uh, some heat. And if that's easing it, it's just the muscle. You know, uh, one presumes having had the chest x-ray, you've been fully checked out for chest pain. Um, uh, so, um, if, if your doctor's not coming up with um, anything specific, it could be just something, a digestive thing or a muscular skeletal thing. So this is the question I, I wanted to answer from Janice and Robert. Uh, please clarify the difference between good and bad cholesterol. Well, technically speaking, one is HDL and the other one is LDL. So high density lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins. But the way, name's good and bad are just applied by the medical profession there's you know your liver produces both of them okay so i strongly strongly recommend anybody interested in cholesterol and statins and heart disease read the book by dr michael mckitterick the great cholesterol con it's a best-selling book you'll get it on amazon and it just goes into like how the medical profession were looking for something to tie heart disease to. They wanted something to tie heart disease to. So they did these big studies in all these countries and they found that they, if they took a certain group of countries where they, there was high cholesterol, high LDL, that it showed that there was an increase in heart disease. They could have easily taken a group of countries where there was lower LDL and showed that there was an increase. It was just a matter of, you know, picking the statistics that you wanted to suit your argument, basically. They had statistics from all different countries, so they just went looking for what they want. There's a, there was a huge article in the uh, Daily Express in the UK recently by some researchers, and there's been huge controversy over this about the fact that statins have absolutely no effect on the outcome for heart disease. And the vast majority of people who have heart, are, and I can't say the vast majority, but a lot of people who have heart disease have what you call normal cholesterol levels. So they just play around with these numbers and if they can reduce the number for cholesterol, they increase their sales and their profits. But anyway, it's all in that book, The Great, the, uh, the Great Cholesterol Con. So I would advise you to, to have a read of that. Uh, any let, let me let me answer as well, though. Okay. Uh, you know, um, 
your body creates cholesterol. Actually, most of the cholesterol in your body will be made in the liver. And the reason for that is because cholesterol is a very essential element that is, forms the basis of hormones and your body uh, needs it as a building block. So cholesterol is a very, very good thing. Um, and it's something that we naturally are making ourselves. Um, and initially, uh, as Noel pointed out, it was considered that uh, cholesterol was a problem. And then it was discovered that in fact, there are two types of cholesterol, the high density and the low density. The high density pro, um, cholesterol is considered to be good and protective. And it, it, it actually, if you have a high cholesterol and a high high density cholesterol, you have no problem at all. But it's the low density cholesterol that is now associated or has been associated with, with the plaque, which is, you know, it's a far more complex picture than just uh, cholesterol, as Noel pointing out. Um, and the uh, research has gone on, and there is, in fact, a very low density lipoprotein, which may be the worst and, and the really bad one. And that one is actually made from sugar. So in fact, you'd be far better off uh, reducing the sugar in your diet rather than necessarily the fat, because the research is turned around now and it's not necessary that um, the saturated fats are that bad for us, but certainly sugar is. And sugar is made in the body into many different elements. It's a slow poison that over time has a very detrimental effect. It ends up being the worst antioxidant that you can have in your body is uh, uh, processed sugar but it also creates the very bad cholesterol. So yeah. watch for Janet. The, actually, the theory now is coming around that uh, this, what happens is the endothelium, the lining of the, of the arteries gets, gets torn uh, through stress and through high levels of sugar. And then what happens is, is that there's a repair mechanism goes on in the body to, to re repair that tear. And that involves, like if you, get, if you cut your arm, you, you form a scab, but unfortunately this forms on the inside. And some of that, when they look at that plaque, they find that there is cholesterol in there as well as many, many other things. But then that's like saying, you keep arriving at the scene of a crime and every time you, you arrive 10 minutes after the crime happens and every time you arrive at the crime, the police are there. And then you come to the conclusion eventually that it must be the police that are causing the crimes because they're there all the time. And in the same way, they find the cholesterol is there in the thing, but it's actually the inflammation and the tear in, in, in the lining of the, of the archery that causes the initial problem. And then it's when that plaque actually breaks away that we can have strokes and things like that. But it's very, very interesting reading that book. I think, as I said, The Great Cholesterol Con is just Google that and it's, it's very much well worth, worth to read. But as Dr. Brennan says, statins are a... God, I don't know. They must be one of the most profitable drugs out there, Don, are they? Multi oh, they are, but billion. they're by far the most billions every year, billions. And as soon as a newspaper will print any report of any research of any criticism of them, within a week they'll be taking it back or they'll be printing some report about how brilliant they are and they're saving everybody's lives. You use cholesterol in your brain, you know, in, in the brain cells, in the, everywhere cholesterol is used and there is a, a an anecdotal connection between statins and, and um, dementia as well you know so it's it's I don't think it's proven at this stage but certainly it's of concern you know so anyway read that book uh, let's see any support for someone with I'll have to this is a new one to me decu vein tino synovitis and plantar fasciitis it's, they're both they're both conditions of the attendance the synovial membranes, which you know our, our, our ligaments go through. So um, the, the plantar fasciitis is in the in the foot and the, the quervance is in the wrist. So basically it's turning out to be a painful wrist and foot and it's very much a vata condition. Um, it's it's like the system is drying up. We're not lubricated. Um, and so all the all the aspects of balance, that, uh, all we talked about the oiling, the heating, um, uh, all of that is going to be good for us. Now, Dr. Nahid, you wanted to say something there, did you? Yeah. So when we were discussing cholesterol, so air fryer is you know the biggest uh, thing. People think they know we have to cook in air fryer. So I really wanted to discuss this, that whether air fryers are healthy or not. Uh, you said that the cholesterol con. 
the great cholesterol corn. So that's I the think name that's of the answer. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, eating cholesterol, this is the interesting thing. Eating food rich in cholesterol does not increase your cholesterol. You know, and like I have friends being told by their doctors because their cholesterol is a little high and they don't want to take statins. They're being told to stop eating butter and stop eating dairy and start taking margarines and all. And that's the exact opposite of what Ayurveda would be saying. The exact, it's these things that will cause the problem with hydrogenated vegetable oils in them and stuff like that, you know? Now you may need to cut down a little, but the more close to nature the product is, the better it's going to be, you know? But anyway, I just, probably we could go on all night about cholesterol, but uh, it's, it's definitely- In, in fact, uh, in fact, one of the things that I found with many, many, many friends and many people that they don't want to have oil because that's unhealthy, but they are okay to have breads, white breads every single day for their breakfast they're okay to have cakes and pastries and everything like like okay no that's that's healthy the, that's yeah, pretty healthy they it's just like they don't want to fat. have oil yeah i don't know where where they're yeah. coming from e eating fat doesn't make you fat eating yeah. foods rich in cholesterol does not increase 75 percent of your cholesterol is manufactured in your liver so your liver can adjust for your diet and adjust for these different things, you know? So in actual fact, there's a theory as well, maybe it might be of, of interest to you, Dr. Brennan, that as you get older, you actually need more cholesterol because it's more lubricating. It's more a balance to the vata that's in the system. I don't know if you, if you, if you subscribe to that theory or not, Dr. Brennan, but... It was, a, yeah, it was um, a Vaija, a very renowned Vaija in India. When I, I mentioned cholesterol to him, he said, and that was his reaction. He said, we're in a vata time of life. The body naturally is creating more oils to balance our vata. Um, and certainly, you know, one of the questions about um, reducing cholesterol to the extent that it's now done is that it results in, in um, problems for the brain because the brain is 70% fat in its structure and people then developing memory problems or whatever. Yeah, we need healthy fats in your diet. Don't be afraid of fats. Eating fat doesn't make you fat. Eating too much makes you fat and eating lots of sugars will make you fat. Uh, so Neve says, I know coffee isn't great for digestion, but I love a cup in the morning before breakfast. Well, it my advice is go for it, Neve. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that one as well. So uh, just moderation, moderation. Very good for Kappa, Neve. If you're Kappa, we'd even yeah. recommend. If one cup is fine. Okay, what's the name of the statin book? I put that in. Is there any advice to improve kidney function? It's from Lisa McKeown. Um, a lot of, again, back to what you eat. If you're eating too much of processed food, it's, it's too much for your liver and kidney. So first you clean your food, hydrate yourself. Exercise is a big one because we, if you're sitting, we are putting a lot of strain on our organs. On the yoga postures, the, the, as Dr. Nahid was saying earlier, twists and side bends, they're brilliant to stretch your organs. And uh, go for cycling, go for kind of a gentle hike and jog, those type of activities as well. Swimming could be very good. There are herbs um, uh, like MA2 is Jenny Track, one of the main herbs that we use that could be very beneficial as well. Gokshur. Yeah. Cut down all the cold drinks and cokes which you are having, cut down on alcohol. So you are going to save your kidney 50% if you cut down on cokes and alcohols. Yeah, just forget about carbonated drinks. Everybody just forget about carbonated drinks and alcohol moderation, obviously, but carbonated drinks, there's no need to be, there's no need to be drinking that stuff. Uh, so there's Chantel is in a bit of a problem. Any suggestion for helping excruciating pain in an arthritic knee during the night, which wakes me up every two to three hours, every single night. We kind of covered that a little bit, but uh, Dr. Brennan, if you want to give any other suggestion there, probably the MA634 before she goes to bed, but. I'd love her, yeah, an awful nuisance. And a good hot water bottle as well, because the heat, the heat it should be helpful for, it's a very vata condition. So the, the oiling, the heating, um, and oh, the, the, joint, oh, the joint suit tablets taken frequently, and um, maybe, would turmeric be useful there, to, you know, to take turmeric capsules for the anti-inflammatory effect could be helpful. 
um, and the joint suit tablets. Take two of each, certainly two, two, two twice a day of the uh, joint suit tablets. Joint suit is MA4572. So Chantal, it looks like that's something that you'd really need to work on and get on, on a plan on because that can't be nice. And then if you're not getting proper sleep, that's having a knock-on effect for everything. Your mood, your humor, everything, you know? So uh, you need to kind of get that one sorted out. So MA4572 is joint suit and uh, turmeric. You can, well, you can get that anywhere really, you know? Uh, we did do a little heat fermentation. If you just... um make a little paste with ginger, turmeric, mustard oil, or a drop of 64 oil, and just, just give it a heat with a piece of muslin cloth, put this paste and just up and massage it circular motion over the knee. Thanks, Dara. Dara put a link in how long? to the book. For how long, uh, Raj? With the just a few minutes, just a few minutes. You can even put salt in the mixture and turmeric and it will be turmeric will be like a stain but so so don't do near your bed or somewhere you put a old towel or something underneath and so you can put salt uh, turmeric ginger both dry form and a bit of um, uh, oil so mustard oil is good because joints with oil will be expensive to do that so mustard oil is great for pain if you don't have access to mustard oil use the rapeseed oil heat up the whole mixture make a paste either apply the paste like a little um, a mask kind of thing, lepa we call, leave it on and uh, then leave it on for five minutes. It's going to go cold anyway. Then you have to put it back on the, on the pan, heat it again. If you have patience, do it a few times or keep in a, make a poultice by keeping in a muslin cloth and have a little oil in the pan. So the oil is there. So keep dipping it back to the oil and kind of a gentle uh, fermentation kind of massage over the knee. And that seems like a lot of water there. Okay, so a lot, of, a lot of tips there. Back to the kidneys. What causes kidney stones and what should one do to get rid of them? Well, kidney stone to me would be AMA, but anyway. Uh... Depends on if you have kidney stone, different time, calcium type, oxalic acid, what they're made up of. So you have to cut down on the food rich in calcium, oxalic acid, which is a lot of tomatoes and spinach and, and potassium rich food. Uh, you may not be hydrating yourself very well. Yeah, so there are different reasons. Too much heat in the body could be the cause of um, calcification. You might be taking too many supplements. So yeah, vitamin K2 is very good to avoid the calcification. And uh, yeah, the herb we were talking about, Jenny Track. And there is a one particular kind of lentil as well. Do you remember the name? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gram, make the you soak it in water overnight into the water drink that water that's brilliant to break down the the stone so things like that okay so some of those products like mustard seed oil and what was it called horse gram horse gram yeah. it's kind of a lentil okay. it's easily you, you might get them in asian stores you asian store. stores so here's one and this is a good one any secrets to reduce wrinkles on your neck massage your neck upward motion uh, if we have, uh, I don't know if we have the, the face oil in stock or not, otherwise a rosy oil, just kind of stretch your neck and you do some of the neck exercises. Radiant skin is great for, in general, for wrinkles and all. Or you so. can take uh, rock salt along with uh, coconut oil or olive oil and just yeah. exfoliate it a little bit once or twice a week in upward motion, obviously, uh, to, uh, you know, to shake up all the dead skin and then massaging obviously going to help with wrinkles and rigging skin and all the supplement all okay things. so um this is one for dr brennan i have low blood pressure bottom of normal range and low pulse rate 47 beats at resting is this normal my most my most revel i'm not sure i'm not on any medications and i exercise regularly i know i don't know what that part is paul my most uh, anyway, you're not on any medications and next. So low blood pressure, uh, Don. Um, yeah, um, it is uh, the herbal for that would be MA three three two five. So that would be one thing that you could think of doing. I think it's sort of nourishing treatments that you want. Um, so your oil massage and um, making sure you have your your good night's sleep and your relaxed meals. Um, and uh, it's likely to be a, um, a, a vata thing, I think, the low blood pressure. Um, 
So I think meditation as well tends to normalize blood pressure. So if it tends to be too low, I, I don't think it's necessarily a problem unless it's giving you symptoms. Um, if you are feeling dizzy and the like. Um, and be because of anemia as well. Well, I think that you know, with the blood, with the low blood, uh, with the low pulse rate as well. I'm sure you've had that checked out. Um, it is a bit low. Uh, if if you were very fit and it was in the 50s, fair enough. Down to 47, no harm in just having having it double checked with your GP. Okay. Uh, and then that would cover the anemia as well. Any advice for my sister who has dizziness from? It looks like labyrinthitis. Maybe I pronounced that incorrectly. Yes, one of the ear can you know, inflammation. So I think the warm oil um, could help, as we said, talk about the ear drops earlier on. Okay, we covered that earlier on. With the, um, we are getting those ear drops in stock. There is, well. there is a condition, Noel, um, and it's benign postural high, uh, postural benign postural vertigo. And so that, that can be due to a displacement of little particles in the balance mechanism in the inner ear. And the, the movement of the head then caused these little particles to tickle the, the little hairs in the fluid that um, monitor our position in space. So they get irritated and the person gets dizzy. In that situation, if it is that particular condition and it's worth getting it checked for because it's so easily treated, then um, a physiotherapist um, who knows the Epley maneuver. It's called the Epley maneuver to sort that one out. It's a maneuver where they bring your head into different positions so that they actually eventually get the crystals to shift back, back, back and go back into the place where they ought to be. And so the Epley maneuver um, from a physiotherapist or your GP, just get that one checked out in case. Okay. Okay. I know someone who did that and they had good results with it. Uh, is it okay to do spring detox if we have health issues? Do the webinar. And then if you have health issues you're concerned about, just get clearance from your Vija, from one of the doctors. That's all. Uh, it, we'll go through who can do the spring detox, who shouldn't do it. And people on the margins, we just want them to have, uh, we just want them to be cleared by a doctor because uh, we, we do all our detoxes under medical supervision and that's the proper way to do them. So we have support groups, we have everything. We have, you know, there's all the information, all the leaflets. So we do say who can do it, who can't do it. And if someone's on the borderline, then we ask them to get clearance from their Ayurvedic doctor, you know. So Anna Carey says kindness has a ripple effect that almost infinite when strong and sincere. That's true, uh, Anna. And Miriam says so true, so true. Anna Fitzgerald says six months free from arthritis hip pain after doing your course last year and following Ayurvedic diet and some practices. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Okay, uh, and that's fantastic to hear. Six months free from arthritis, and that's just from doing the course and following the Ayurvedic diet. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Uh, thank you. You've been a beautiful and hopefully and loving response. We can do it from Anna Carey. Uh, my hearing is gradually declining. I am 69. What can I do to help my ears? Can you comment, please, from Carol Ironside? Again, Karen, Vata time of life. Hearing is a Vata sense. So you want to do everything to balance Vata to prevent the hearing loss. It's also that you could work locally, and if Noel gets those ear drops, that you could put them in your ear going to bed at night with a little cotton wool to prevent them coming back out and staining your pillow. And the ear oil overnight, the nasal drops, because the nose is the gateway to the head in terms of clearing out toxins and nourishment. And you have a eustache tube that drains the middle ear. It goes into the back of the nose. When you put the drops into the nostrils regularly, three, four times a day, when you get up in the morning and after meals, then it will gradually uh, get the herbals into that uh, middle ear area, which could be of help. Other than that, you need nerve tonics if it's a nerve deafness. Okay, so, we're and getting... Rasayanas can help, right? Uh, the Maharishi Amrit Clash piece because it has all the herbs to nourish your senses. MA5 will be the one. Yeah, that's that's MA4 or 5 or both? MA5, I think. MA5, the piece. Yeah. 
yeah. in the, the herb, I'm fine. Right. Okay, we're getting very close to the end here. We'll do a few more. And uh, this is from Amber. Is shingles a CAFA condition and diabetes? I'm not sure about shingles, diabetes, I would assume is a CAFA condition, but shingles, I know it's... Oh, shingles would be um, uh, very mm. pain, angry, mm. hot, pain. Pardon? Yeah, go on, keep going. Yeah, what the pizza, because of the pain and the, the heat and all of that. So it's more like a viral. Anything the virus kind of liver related, and liver is more of a, a pitta organ. Diabetes could be kapha vata, more of a kapha. Okay, okay. So Declan Tony is a nice thing. I'm just going to read it out. It says, "Dear Noel and to the doctors, thank you so much for this webinar. It's my first time to join with you all, so thank you for that." In reply to an earlier question, I recall. Uh, Ramana Maharishi, the great Indian sage, once said, your own self-realization is the greatest service you can render to the world. Yes. And I would agree wholeheartedly with that. And that's, I think, how I answered the question by saying, look after yourself. And if the ultimate looking after yourself is to awaken to who yourself is. And uh, Declan's journey is amazing. The way he, how he met to end up with the Ramana Maharishi and how he has transformed his own life and journey with Ayurveda. It's great to see Declan here. Yeah. That's, that's very good. Come on, thank you. Obviously, obviously, you know Declan. So that's what, what, Declan, what Declan says is, is relevant for every one of us. Everyone who's listening to this, you should ask yourself, what's the purpose in your life? You know, what are you here for? You're not going to be here forever. Everybody thinks that everybody else is going to die, and they never think they're going to die themselves, but you are. And when you're gone, will you kindly ask yourself, at that moment, what will be significant in your life? Well, if you have self-realized in this life, you have achieved something extraordinary. So I know all the other aspects of your life and purposes that you're here are very important, but don't forget your fundamental purpose of awakening within. And I would strongly recommend that, that you should be re regularly doing transcendental meditation or some very important to you spiritual path. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to actually, I, I want to, at the end of all of these talks now, because there's new people coming on, I actually want to share my screen and bring people to the website where they can get more information. I'm going to do one more question. Again, it's from Carol Ar Arnside, and it says, my daughter has endometriosis. How successful is Ayurvedic in treatment? I think it can be a long path. I think all the doctors would have treated endometriosis. It's mostly a vata condition. I think Ayurveda can has, have success with it but it's not an overnight success. It, it, it takes a, a lot of work. If there's any of the doctors who would like to add anything to that. The oh, go ahead. Go ahead. The success of the Ayurvedic treatment is directly proportional to how vigilant and how regular you are with your Ayurvedic regime. Well said, doctor. As simple as. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually perfectly true. Well said, because Ayurveda is knowledge. It means knowledge of life. And that's what the Ayurvedic doctor does. He gives you knowledge. What you do with that knowledge is up to you. The doctor can't make you do the things. So it depends on the commitment of the person and it depends on, you know, how much they want to change and will they do the things. And, you know, if you meet somebody and you give them all this knowledge and they go out the door and they say, well, I can't do any of this or I don't want to do any of this or I'm not willing to do any of this, then what's the use? What's going to change? You know, all that happens is that more suffering comes along and eventually the suffering gets so strong that it does make you change. So that's one of the values of suffering, I suppose. Um, okay. If you don't mind, I just want to share the screen uh, for a second. Um, and I want to bring everybody to our website, which is what's come up here. Okay. So I'm just going to bring you to the uh, the home screen. So our website is ayurveda.ie and the spelling of Ayurveda is there. A-Y-U-R-V-E-D-A. Ayu means lifespan and Veda means knowledge. So ayurveda.ie. There are the contact details for all our doctors on the right-hand side. So Dr. Brennan currently only does online consultations and his diary is online and you can book your online Zoom consultation with him, okay? So Dr. Brennan can be booked in. You don't ring Dr. Brennan. There's no phone number there. You go on to his diary. You see what's available and you just book it in. Uh, Dr. Nahid, Dr. Ritvinder and Dr. Tritelli, you can email them. It's probably the easiest thing to do because they might be available to answer their phones. Uh, our ring, you know, you can ring or they ring you back. Uh, Dr. Nahid is in Cork City. Dr. Ritvinder is in Lucan. At the moment, Dr. Tritelli is in India. But 
fact, she's in Dublin City. She's around the Grand Canal Dock. And they will all see people in person as well as by Zoom as well, you know. So that's uh, that's the, the consultation details there. That's our free seven lesson online Ayurveda course. You just need to click on that and you can register for that course. And that's a, a, a brilliant, brilliant course. And then if you go to the booking page here, I'll just click on that. And that'll bring you into our booking page. And you can see you can do uh, an online consultation with Dr. Brennan. Now, if it's your first consultation, it's always an hour. So don't use that 30 minute one. If it's, if it's your first one, you have to do an hour. Your follow ups with Dr. Brennan are half an hour. OK, that's our spring detox uh, from the 18th to the 24th of April. Uh, I would if you haven't done that before. I'd maybe advise waiting until you do the webinar and then decide if that's something that you want to do. But uh, we will if people want to book it now and then decide after the webinar that no, it's not for them then we will refund the whole fee in thing. But uh, yeah, you can either wait or not. And then the other thing I want to talk about is the cookery course one. I did the soup video two weeks ago, I think it was, and there was a massive response to that. I mean, just, I got a great, great response. People really liked the flask lunch, but that was just me in my kitchen at the start of lockdown, just basically cooking a the soup there. So Dr. Richvinder has done a, a cookery course um, I don't, I don't know when exactly we did it, but it's probably a while back. So in this video, she shows you how to cook the mung dal, which is a, a staple in Ayurveda, how to cook vegetable rice, how to cook aloo gobi, which is cauliflower and potato dish, and also how to make lassi. Now, I just want to be completely clear with people. This is a replay. This is not a live cookery course. It's a replay. There will be no live Q&A on this. There is a Q&A, but it's the one that was recorded at the time that we did it. So it's a replay. We're going to play it on the 2nd of March, which is, uh, I think it's uh, either it's a week or whatever. Oh, and uh, and it costs 10 euro to do that. It's not free. The one I did the other day with me was free, but this is Dr. Richvinder, so there'll be a charge for that. So anybody interested in learning a bit more about Ayurvedic cooking, uh, can you can sign up to do that and uh, that's it. So that's, that's the website. That's where you do book Dr. Brennan. That's where you book any of our courses. And then back at the, on the main site there, this is where you get uh, the information from the doctors. And we've hundreds of articles on this. If you go to health advice, you can see them. These are things that you spoke about tonight. Hair care, headaches and migraine, healthy heart, hemorrhoids, immunity boosters. We, and they're all articles with PDFs that you can download on them. And also there's an introduction to Ayurveda. There's a body type test you can do to determine if you're Vata, Pitta, Kapha. There's great explanations of what Vata, Pitta and Kapha are. You can sign up for our newsletter. And then if you go down here a little bit further and you click on this, it'll bring you to our YouTube channel. And we have hundreds of videos on our YouTube channel. And lots of them in the early days, we did lots of them with Dr. Brennan on things like sleep and things like that. So you can, this, this website is a huge resource of information. It's not just a shop where we sell all our products, but there's actually a huge resource of information in there as well, you know? So I'll stop that and I'm back, I think. Uh, so let's just see, thank you to all the doctors. I love these sessions. These sessions bring me so much on many different levels. It's really amazing. I love them and look forward to them each time. They've made a big difference to my life. Thank you all for the knowledge and inspiration and fun. That's from Sally Hayden. And Sally, thank you very much for that. Uh, I haven't got back to you yet about that, but I will do. You sent me a very nice letter about my mother and uh, I, I and a beautiful card as well. So so thank you for that. And I will, I will be back to you about that. Uh, thank you to all the doctors for sharing your wisdom. Uh, Thank you, Nahid. We each have the option to take responsibility. Again, so relevant from Claire Lafferty. Thank you, Noel and the doctors from Renu. Uh, I think I'm going back over myself at this stage. Uh, many thanks from Janice. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. I think we've uh, raising consciousness is much needed right now to the light. Exactly, to the light. Wonderful evening. So much information. Thank you, Noel and the doctors. Thank you for giving all your time and thoughts. Love to you all. And that's from Anna Carey. Okay, everybody, thanks a million for coming on. I think the numbers are dropping down. We're getting very close to nine o'clock. We did have well over 100 people on the call. We'll keep in touch with you. We'll have another Q&A next month and spread the word. And the way to spread the word is get people to sign up for that seven lesson Ayurveda course. That's the perfect starting position for learning about Ayurveda. 
A big, big thank you to the doctors for coming on and giving us their time. And a big thank you to everybody that came on. And it just remains for me to say, unless there's something, Don looks like he wants to say something. And to know for organizing this all. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very He's going to be the doctor. Why just soon anyway? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yeah. I have my exam Spotify. this month. I have my exam, yeah. my postgraduate course in the alma mater. I'm doing my exams on the 16th, 17th, 18th, and or the 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th of March. So hopefully he's starting, I'll have, he's starting to do a bit of work now. Too. I'll have to start doing yeah, 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 I'll have to start doing a bit of studying. Okay, listen, namaste, everybody. Thanks a million. We'll, Bye. 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 we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'll send this out tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.